My people, welcome back to another great episode of your favorite show, You and I Talk Show with Louis Zuwachu. Every week, thank you for tuning in. Today, my people on the show, we are remembering a legend and the writer who brought his story to life. Stay tuned. My people, thank you so much for being here today. We will go to India, we will go from England and Canada and bring such a great story, the book A Forgotten Legend. Patrick Blenner Hass. Blenner Hass it. All right, Patrick Blenner Hass it and Balbir Singh. Good senior day. here on the show. Thank you so much for being here both. Um, so you are the writer. Mm -hmm. He is the man yeah. that you wrote about. Yes. You know, and then the reason why you wrote about him, he's wearing the jacket mm -hmm. for that. You know, the India Olympic Games. Yes. He is a, a medal, gold medal winner, one of the most decorated athletes mm -hmm. in India. Mm -hmm. Why did you think about bringing this story to life? Uh, well, it was a, a family friend that originally put me in touch with Balbir's story. And um, I had been to India before. Um, I went to India in uh, 2010. Uh, I spent some time in Chennai. Uh, so when I, I met the family friend, it was uh, basically I had the connection with India already. And he asked me and, and told me Balbir's story. And he said, would you like to go to India? And I said, yes, this is, this is an amazing story. And uh, I'm 100% in. And uh, from the moment I learned of Balbir to the moment that I flew to India was less than a month. So it was uh, very quick. And, and uh, I got a journalist visa and went to India. And, and, uh, and here we are. Yes, because you're also a journalist, mm -hmm. you know. So what is it about his story mm -hmm. that really captivated you and made you say, you know what, mm -hmm. this story should not be forgotten because you're talking about a forgotten legend. Yeah. So what is it about it? I, it? You know what, it's a number of things. I think uh, first and foremost, I just really connected with Balbir's story. Um, for somebody to win three Olympic gold medals, I mean, that's a feat in its own. Um, in which uh, field did he win the, uh, the In Olympics? field hockey, so he won in 1948 in London, 1952 in Helsinki, and 1956 in Melbourne, as his, as his blazer will show you. Wow, 48, 52, 56, my yeah. goodness. So, um, and the blazer, by the way, is so fresh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how he kept it so fresh, you know? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he actually has a funny story. He used to have three, uh -huh. one from each, but it was too much trouble carrying them around. Oh. So he just got it made into one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the three gold medals, you're yeah. like, how come nobody uh, knows about him? Yeah. Yeah. And so you fly to India. Yeah. And you meet him for the first time. Yeah. Wow. How was that? Uh, I met him in his, he lives with his daughter in, in Chandigarh, which is about a four hour drive north of New Delhi. And uh, we lived together. And uh, we were roommates for a couple weeks. And we had breakfast together. And at night, we would. Uh, sit down and talk about his life and have a whiskey. And uh, we went over his story and uh, it is, it's just quite remarkable. And um, I think it, it sort of touches on uh, a lot of stories from that age, you know, Jesse Owens and Louis Zampernini. Um, these are iconic Olympians um, that may have been forgotten a little bit throughout the years. So um, maybe uh, my duty as a journalist is to help people remember Balbir's story along with the other ones from that era. Yeah, mm -hmm. so does Balbir speak English enough for him to tell you his story and tell us how, how he reacted to you? How did you react when you see Canadian guy? Huh? Well, <laughs> I was very happy and thrilled 
to know that this handsome young man, <laughs> tall, very intelligent, has come to interview me and write a book on me. Yeah. And that gave him happiness. And is it right? Yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm flattered you said I was handsome. <laughs> uh, he stayed with us for some time. Uh -huh. And uh, every, uh, I, we used to walk together in a rose garden in front of our house and then uh, have chat in the evening and then have some whiskey in the evening. So Is just, it all right? just a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> because <laughs> throughout my life, I have been a teetotaler. At school, college, university, I played hockey, no liquor. But when I came to Canada, <laughs> then, <laughs> then my sons, they, because in Canada, it's just something common. And then I started. Now these days I take red wine. <laughs> so that's good enough for me. In old age, doctors also say, this is good for you. Mm -hmm. so. so this is how you stayed young. Well, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, that my, my family, my sons, they look after me very well. Nice. So naturally I am happy uh -huh. and I, you know. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here. Mm -hmm. So the whole process now of mm -hmm. writing, when he tells you his story, are you walking around with a notebook or are you recording this with your mind? Do you have a little recorder? We, yeah, we, um, so we, I spent two weeks with him in India. And as I mentioned, every night we'd sit down and I had a tape recorder on my phone. And, and so we had lots of conversations. But we also went around India. We went to the Golden Temple in Amritsar together. Um, we went to Patiala. Uh, we went uh, a couple other places. Yeah. And um, basically, it was my job for, for two weeks was to soak up as much information as I could about Balbir's life. And uh, as you can see, Balbir is uh, very eloquent and he's very good at telling, uh, telling us his life story. And he's got such an amazing story, it, it made my job a lot pretty easy. All right. We'll take a short break and come back and get into it. You and I talk show with Louis Zuachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uwachu.com to be a guest on the show. All right, my people, so we're here with Patrick. I'm just going to say your first name. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> and Bob Bill. And uh, Balbil told me that his name Sing means lion. Interesting. So he's like a lion, and then he got the the lion yeah. thing. <laughs> so, what is it about him that that made him forget it? I mean, is is this because India has mm -hmm. other issues, other problems, and then celebrating an Olympic gold is not necessarily on their top priority? Like, what is it? Yeah, I mean, that plays a part in it too. I mean, we talked a little bit earlier about how it happened a long time ago, and uh, I mean, you're you're right. India has had a very complicated uh, history, um, and that predates partition when they were under British rule. And even after they became a sovereign nation, uh, India has, I think, struggled with its own identity. Um, and that's followed it up until modern days. And you're now seeing that uh, uh, with Modi a little bit. Um, and I think with Balbir, um, there's a, another field hockey player named Dan Chand. And he's of uh, Hindu background. And uh, he's widely regarded in India as the most famous, best hockey player of all time. Uh, so I think with this book, what we're trying to say is uh, we're not trying to take the mantle away from Dan Chan. We just want to let people know that there's another really great field hockey player out there. And, you know, there's uh, always room for more than one superstar at the top. You know, you look at a sport like soccer, you have Ronaldo and Messi. In basketball, you have LeBron and Steph Curry, although Steph's playing a lot better lately. <laughs> But so what we want to tell people is that uh, in field hockey, there, there's two greats. And uh, I'm sitting with one of them right now. And yeah. uh, so that's our goal, yeah. Yeah. So how did field hockey get to India in the first place? You know, like, what, what is, I mean, it's very different from the mm -hmm. 
can I call it the real Hawkey? Which hockey. one is the real Hawkey? Oh, uh, no. Do you want to <laughs> tell the story about, uh, maybe tell the story about how you started playing field hockey? Yeah. When you first started. And why field hockey, you know? I was a young child, about five or six, and the house we were living was just in front of the hockey field. Oh. And sitting in the main gate, courtyard's main gate, I used to watch boys playing, students playing hockey. That's why hockey fascinated me, and I have always said hockey has been first love since childhood. So you were in that environment, mm -hmm. and then you simply, you, you perfected yourself in that environment. So when I started, my father, I was six, six birthday, he bought me a small hockey stick. And that was the last day, start of history. I loved it, I liked, kept it with me all the time, and sometimes while going to bed, take it in my bed like this. <laughs> really, it's a step. And then my school had three teams. C team, up to primary classes. B team, middle classes. Then higher classes, A team. And I played in all three teams. First, as a kid, I first goalkeeper. Then I came full back. Uh -huh. In B team, I started as a goalkeeper, then became full back. Then A team, same. I played goalkeeper in grade eight. And in grade nine and 10, I played full back. Uh -huh. There I was seen by the local college. Oh, wow. And they selected me when I passed metric. They selected me in the college team. I played, from there I was seen by Lahore, a professor, Sikh National College, Lahore. He took me to Lahore. And there I passed my FA, and then while playing at Lahore, mm -hmm. Sardar Harbel Singh, a renowned hockey coach, who was our national coach in 1952 and 1956, he saw me playing at Lahore. And he took me to his college, to Amritsar, wow. on hockey scholarship. Uh -huh. I stayed there, passed my BA exam, became a graduate, joined MA, and uh, police people, they liked me. Because of a good hockey player, Sir John Bennett, an English man, he told his officers to recruit me in police. Wow. But my father was a freedom fighter, uh -huh. fighting against the Britishers. Uh -huh. I never wanted to join police. <laughs> I left the college. I ran away to Delhi. Uh -huh. There, from there, I had invitation to join Central PWD. Uh -huh. They had a very good team. Uh -huh. so, wow. so it's amazing because first you loved it as a child, but then you had to practice it, and then you had to prove yourself to be selected. Correct. Yeah. So um, I was going to ask you about the uh, the headdress. What do you call the head? Turban. The turban. Tur OK. So when you're playing hockey, are you playing with it? No, no. OK. We remove the turban. Mm -hmm. There's ball, the hair around here uh -huh. and a white hand key around it. Uh, any, any of the pictures in this? I think this one has it, yeah. Right okay, on the top okay. there, yeah, yeah. If you can smile, oh, okay, white, okay. white anchor, uh -huh. tie it in out, uh -huh. white anchor, without okay. turban. Okay, so under the turban you have long hair? Long Is your hair. hair long underneath the turban? Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> long, hair. <laughs> long hair, all tied in a bun here, uh -huh. and a white anchor uh -huh. while playing. Uh -huh. But after playing, again, have the turban on, uh -huh. go attend ceremonies, uh -huh. that's all. And, oh. Okay, interesting. Okay, we'll take a short break and come back. And you and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uachu.com to be a guest on the show. All right, my people, thank you so much for being here. It's very interesting. So um, you say your father was a freedom fighter, fighting against the British, 
And here is uh, a man who's from British uh, ancestry coming to write your story. How did, how did that go? You know, did your father say, you know, what is this? <laughs> the common interest, our common interest was hockey. Mm -hmm. I played hockey and he wanted to write about hockey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that put us together. Okay. And he used to, every evening, I used to relate him stories uh -huh. about my hockey matches, about the Olympic game. He used to keep noting. I see. So he has produced everything in mm -hmm. this. I see. So what about you, mm -hmm. being of British descent and then being in this area in India, which has such a story with, yeah. you know, British, uh, how, how, how do you see yourself in it? I think at the end of the day, I, uh, I like to see myself as a human. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like to see Balbir as a human. And uh, while he may have a, a different faith and he wears a turban and my uh, great-grandparents came from England, uh, we come together because uh, we like field hockey and we like hockey and we have a shared interest. So I think at the end of the day, what I'm trying to do with the book is uh, show people that uh, we're all the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't matter if you're Sikh or Hindu or Muslim or uh, Canadian or British. Uh, we've all got great stories to tell and we can all come together to share them. Yeah, and human beings love mm. stories, sharing stories. Definitely, yeah. Yes. So you're bringing this story to Canada. Yeah. What is the reception now in Canada and what are you hoping or expecting from the Canadians? Well, we wanted to bring this story to Canada because Balbir is actually a Canadian. Mm, okay, I was going to ask if the red, you know, the red oh, Canada. the maple leaf. <laughs> and the tie, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. The, uh, yeah, so in uh, Balbir's uh, sons have lived in Canada. They immigrated over here uh, uh, many years ago. And uh, so he's been coming to Canada since uh, before I was born. So wow. yeah. <laughs> you can say that Balbir is even more Canadian than me. Yeah. And uh, he became a Canadian citizen in 2000. So uh, I think the reason I'm bringing him to a Canadian audience is because I want to let people know that there's another great Canadian hero for them yes. to, to look at. And, and uh, he's such a great uh, mentor for youth. And uh, he preaches things like being a... a you know, being a good player, but also focusing on your studies at school. Um, and I think it's it's good that we have uh, uh, celebrities and people that we look up to that have some positive values. Yeah, that's very fascinating. So how do you like uh, Canada versus uh, India? And how come you, you stayed in India and you live in India and your sons, they immigrated well, to Canada? Well, Canada is an advanced country. Advanced country. Mm -hmm. India is advancing, mm -hmm. coming up, mm -hmm. old uh, democracy. Oh. And well, so I like because I was born there. I, I played there. Mm -hmm. I won gold medals for them. Mm -hmm. Of course, I like that. Mm -hmm. But coming here, Canada is a beautiful country. My sons are here. So naturally, I like the country. It's, and I enjoyed my stay here. And my daughter is back at Chandigarh. So I keep shuttling between the two countries. So how many children did you, did you have? In My daughter, eldest child. Mm -hmm. Then three sons, they're all Canadians here. Mm -hmm. So you have four children? Four children. Mm -hmm. and how many uh, wives? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tell you. <laughs> according to my wife, I had two wives. OK, according to your wife. According to her, yeah. she used to tell, and uh, when I say, my first love hockey, my first love, I, when I use stories, <laughs> she say he himself said, I am his second wife. <laughs> People used to laugh. I so see. she was very jolly. Uh -huh. I played all my Olympics mm -hmm. after my marriage. It was strange. People, when they marry, they retire from them. Mm -hmm from active hockey or active sport. Mm -hmm. But I played entire Olympic hockey after my marriage, and the credit for that goes to my wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because she encouraged me. Yeah. Go ahead, oh. come on, play more, try, win. Oh, Every wow. time we That's went, nice. and she encouraged me, That's go nice. and win. Yeah. Come back with a gold medal. Oh. So that helped me a lot. So that's that's maybe the, the motivation that pushed you to win, because other guys are quitting because they're getting married. But for me, yeah. after marriage, yeah. I 
all three Olympic, and then World Cup, World Cup. Only World Cup India has won so far. I was chief coach and manager of the Indian team in 1975 Kuala Lumpur, third World Cup. We won. He has seen the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to take a short break and come and keep talking okay. about it. Thank you for You and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uachu.com to be a guest on the show. My people, thank you so much for being here. We're still talking to Patrick and Bal Bill. So what does it mean to win the gold for your country and the whole world is watching and then you get on the podium and you hear your national song? I mean, are you crying? Are you, how, how are you feeling? Uh, for the first Olympics, London, when we won the Olympic final, our national anthem was, anthem was being played for the first time outside the country. The and first time. Outside. For the first time. Wow. And our national flag was gradually going up. Standing on the victory stand, I was feeling that I am also flying. <laughs> Actual feeling. <laughs> then I realized, oh, flag has gone too up, but I'm still there. <laughs> so <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. And then. India had become a sovereign country in 1947. And I represented all in all three Olympics for a sovereign country. And before that, India had won three Olympic Games, 28, 32, 36. But the entire honor went to British Union Jack because India was a British colony. Uh -huh. So that is different. I played for sovereign India. Uh -huh. That was an honor. Fascinating. This is so fascinating. I, uh, so why this story? And then also, how do you feel uh, when you're writing about a real human being? Mm -hmm. And on top of that, he's still alive, you know, because yeah. sometimes people <laughs> wait, right? Yeah, you yeah. Know, so he's still alive. He's still here. Yeah. He's a real human being. Mm -hmm. What are you feeling about it? You know, it's, it's funny, every time now that uh, I encounter any type of hardship or strife in my life, I, uh, I think, what would Belbir do? So he's, uh, uh, through this, uh, Belbir has become my hero, and he's Thank become you. my inspiration to, uh, to continue uh, fighting and, and working towards uh, good things and accomplishing goals, because I always think to myself, if Belbir can win three Olympic gold medals, I can put a book out on you him. You can, you can. <laughs> and you've written two previous fiction novels. Yes, yeah. So what is, how does it go, the transition from mm. writing something fiction to mm. now non-fiction? Uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a stretch because you can't make everything up. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but Balbir, as uh, the first protagon protagonist of my, uh, my book, uh, uh, he's been great. Uh, he's very happy to chat and tell me all of his stories. And uh, when I was in India with him, we, we talked every night for hours on end. And um, I think when you have such a good uh, protagonist like Balbir, uh, it really makes my job pretty easy. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see, I see. And then um, when you're in India, mm -hmm. Uh, usually here, people will go to an Indian restaurant and yeah, yeah. order Indian food. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm thinking it's all Indian yeah, yeah. The, the whole time. Yeah. How is it for you? Or are you missing some of the food? Are you eating the local food the whole time? Yeah. How is it? We, uh, every morning, we used to have uh, cornflakes <laughs> for breakfast. And uh, Balbir's uh, daughter, Sushbir, was uh, a oh, great sandwich. toast and sandwich. She was a great host, and she cooked. Uh, uh, I had real Indian food uh, when I lived with him. So every morning and every lunch and every dinner, we had uh, authentic Indian food. And my stomach was totally fine. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> they know how to make it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. I have been all along talking about myself. Mm -hmm. But the entire credit goes to my team mm. and my country. Yes. I was just one player. Yes. I don't want to take the entire honor. Yes. I was one player. Yeah. The entire team 
one, yeah. my captains were there, my coaches, honor goes to them. Mm -hmm. That's very humble, you know, to recognize the, the, the entire team. Now, how many of your teammates are still there, still living? Mm, 1948, as far as I know, I think one Mr. Keshav Dutt, he is in Calcutta these days. Mm -hmm. Any other, I am not in touch with so far, maybe, but. What would you say is your secret to longevity and for living as a hero, as a legend all these years? What kept you going even though you didn't get the recognition that you deserved? Well, mm, I am very happy because I have been instrumental in winning gold medals then. And for that, I have already said, I share this honor with my teammates, with my coaches, and with my family, yes. my mothers, yes. my wife, children. Yes. So I share with them. And then India, sovereign country, I said. Yes. Newly established, we won the medal for a sovereign country yeah. for the first time, great honor. Yeah, that was huge. And did you get to see the gold medals? Did you try them on and <laughs> pose with them? You know, you no, try no, to sneak some uh, in your baggage. <laughs> no, uh, um, no, he has them in a, in a bank in, in Chandigarh. Yeah. They're, they're very safe. Yeah, in but position. He, um, my daughter. In, uh, in Chandigarh, he has a, a living room, dining room, and it's about the size of the studio, and the, every wall has a trophy on it. And they're all, the, everywhere you look, there's a trophy or an award for him. Thank so you. the Olympics, do they give out real gold, actually? Yeah, they're, they're real gold that he's got, yeah. And he has them uh, in all in one, uh, one little compartment that he keeps in pretty safe. Keeping. In a bank. Yeah. Because and the most precious prize, such a big cup, my first cup from school. Oh. You oh, remember? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my first cup. Child, he, uh, honor. he won a, a, an award when he was very young and he was playing with the older kids uh -huh. and it was his first time at center forward and he scored many goals in the tournament and that was how he became a center forward. So he has a little salt, salt shaker size cup <laughs> that he won. Wow, we're running out of time. It was so great talking to you guys. Is there any last words? Because I know we can't finish all your stories. Is there any last words that you want to tell people before we let you go? And then we'll keep in touch. But thank you so much for being here. I would say really quickly, in, in 2012 in London, Balbir was named one of 16 iconic Olympians of all time. He's the only South Asian and the only field hockey player on that list, which also has Jesse Owens and uh, Aboriginal Australian runner Kathy Freeman. So pretty prestigious guy right here. Amazing. You You're a real journalist. <laughs> 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 and Balville, any last words? Well, thank you very much. You invited us here. And thanks to this young man who has given a new life through this book. You will live forever. I'm grateful to you. <laughs> you will live forever. All right, that's it, my people. Thank you so much for being here. Have a great week. Keep tuning in.